Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn this into that. Stay tuned. Here's a couple of different holes that you may encounter. You got a small one and you got a big one. So you could use any uh, welding process that you want. MIG would probably be the easiest and fastest way. So if you have one of those, I recommend using those. If you don't, stick machine will do it depending on how thin you're gonna go. So we're gonna start off with the small hole first. First thing that you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and clean this hole up. This hole, how did it happen? Well, there's different ways that could happen. It could be while you're welding and you get a hole in it. On thin metal, that's pretty easy to do. You wanna get the rust off. If there's any paint on it, you wanna make sure you get that off prior to welding. So prep work is first. So now that we got our plate prepped, we got it ground down, got it cleaned up. Remember, if there's any paint or rust on it, make sure you get that off prior to welding. Again, a little hole like this is pretty simple to fix. And I'm just strictly gonna do that with a welding rod and just weld it. For me, I'm gonna use the good old trusty 6010. It's a, it's a fast freezing rod. It's really great on thin metal. So we'll just adjust our amps accordingly and we can get that sewed up. I got it set at about 80 amps. We're gonna go ahead and strike up on it. We're gonna see what it's gonna do. Uh, like I said, fast freezing, if it's gonna get be too hot, I may pull off, stick it back, pull off, stick it back. It's kind of like a stop, start, stop, start to get that sewed up. So let's, let's go ahead and weld this up. And just like that, we got that one welded up. Let's say we can go ahead and grind that off to flushing it out to make it look like there was never even a hole there, just in case you were drilling holes and you accidentally drilled one that you weren't supposed to or something like that. Okay, so now that we got it ground down, we still got a couple little bitty pockets, a little bitty holes that if you want it to be ground down and be completely flush, like there was never a hole there, we need to kind of put some weld on them little holes that we got there, and that's pretty simple. Now that we put a little metal on that hole, let's grind this down and see if we got it. Now, nobody's gonna notice that you messed up except for you. Okay, so now we got the big hole. Now this one, unless you got a couple of days to go ahead and start welding on it to get that sewed up, I recommend a patch. Now, again, we want prep work. So even on our patch that we got here, we gotta get this slag taken off. Get things nice and clean before we start welding. Okay, now that we got everything prepped up and clean, I wanted to talk about cutting your patch out. You may have a big hole like this and it could be caused by rust, let's say for an example. You may wanna cut your patch out big enough to where you can get outside of that rust and get onto some good metal again so you can weld it on. So now that we got this already ready to go, we can go ahead and cover our hole up, get it kind of lined up the way we want it, and we can go ahead and tack it. So I recommend putting at least tacks on all corners. Maybe if it's a longer piece, put a couple along the long seam of that, just so it doesn't try to warp on you or uh, raise up while you're welding it. Now you can go ahead and just weld it all the way around and that'll seal up that hole. And you're gonna wanna at least jump around a little bit while you're welding it. That way you're not putting a bunch of heat in one area causing more warpage there. So try to jump around a little bit while you're welding it. And that, after we got it all bluffed off, you can take a look, make sure you got everything welded around. And this is how you put a patch on a larger hole. So, small hole, big hole. Pretty simple, can be done uh, with stick or MIG, TIG, whichever process that you uh, have available to you. Always remember to clean your material before you weld on it for the best results. And always remember, until the weld cools, keep it hot.